there's no doubt that Boltony Watches had an absolutely outstanding 2022. But one of the standouts of the year, one of their biggest sellers, was their vintage military chronograph. It was simple, it was sleek, and it had a fantastic movement in it, and it really caught that zeitgeist. This year, they've come out with a handful of new releases, and one of those releases everybody has been waiting for. Their new vintage chronograph with the VK67. Are they adding to the range? Or is this a case of less is more and they should have left it alone? Let's find out. Hi there and welcome back to John's Watch Joint and welcome to a review of another Boltony. Now, for those of you thinking there's far too many Boltonies on this channel, simply because I've been asked to do one or two of these. I was asked for the Discoverer and I was asked for this one. But this is the one that everyone's been waiting for because last year's Military Chrono was the biggest seller for Boltony. It was a fantastic watch. I really liked it and it was very subtle, it was very smooth and it was very sleek. I'll bring up a picture just now. But it was an absolute cracker of a watch, very minimalist and just true to form, really, really smart. This one offers something different. So this is the Military Chrono Quartz, this is the S205045. I bought this from the Boltony Watches official store on AliExpress. This is not a paid promotion, I bought it with my own money at full price. I'll bring up the screenshot just now. And what we have here is a lot going on on the dial. This is the complete polar opposite of last year's chronograph. So let's have a proper look at this thing. But first of all, let's get the packaging out of the way. So as per usual, you get your standard box with the Boltony warranty card, all signed and stamped. Cleaning cloth, booklet explaining the movement. It's a VK67. You're not going to have any problems there from Seiko. And then you've got your little tool there for all your strap changes. And as usual, padded and strong box. And this time I've got a bike tool and you're not getting that either, so don't ask for it. Right, onto the watch. And here is the Boltony S205045 up close and personal. And immediately you can see the light play off that crystal. Isn't that just gorgeous? They do crystals really well, do Boltony. And those of you will be saying, well, wait a minute, there's no change to the last watch in terms of the case size and dimensions. And you're absolutely correct. It's exactly the same case. And the same finish everything though inside that face is different so let's go through the specifications the Seiko VK67 three sub dials whereas last year's version was the VK61 with only two sub dials we have a diameter of 39 millimeters a lug to lug of 46.3 millimeters a lug width of 20 millimeters a thickness of only 12.2 millimeters with a nice turn down on those lugs we have a two-piece leather strap with two keepers, one of which is fixed. The leather strap is very good quality, really nice and supple. Weight of the watch is 72 grams as supplied. And we have a sapphire crystal that is slightly domed and not flat. And of course you've got anti-reflective coating on that and you can see that AR working away very efficiently there. Bezel is fixed as you can see, 100 meters of water resistance. You have screw down pushers and screw down crown screw down and bland case back but you would expect that with this time of watch because it's all bead blasted now when it comes to loom you have bgw9 and you also have a retro super luminova so i'll get to uh, how that looks later on in the loom shop but anyway let's have a close look at this watch on the wrist <laughs> Those were some wrist shots there of the S205045 and I do apologise, a lot of the wrist shots are actually indoors just now simply because May in Scotland has been an absolute washout and when it comes to my cabin build as well it's caused quite a lot of consternation 
Uh, we're getting there with the cabin now, by the way. I just got the floor in yesterday, so all the walls are up, insulation's in, and uh, the floor's down, so it's just all the ancillaries now to get done. But yeah, very nice watch there. No size difference at all from last year's one. It's a lot busier, obviously. Anyone from 6.75 inches up to around about 7.25, 7.5, you'll get away with this strap. Any bigger than that, ask them for a bigger strap. You can get it in black leather, tan leather, or you can get a military strap. So that's the three choices you have with that. So what do you have on the dial here? So let me just pull in a little bit closer. So as you can see here, I've actually had this running now for around about 50 minutes. You can see that top sub dial there. That's your minutes. That's 50 minutes. Bottom there is basically just your running seconds as we be going anyway without the chronograph. The chronograph is the red long hand here with the needle on the end. And as you can see here, we're coming up just about to one hour on the 12 hour sub dial. So it's very nicely done. Of course, chronograph, Bolton chronograph is covered by the uh, the hour hand there just now. But the difference between last year's model and this one, obviously, is that this one has a date. So this has everything on it. Now, I've not actually screwed this down because I'm going to take this off just now. So it goes through all the information on it. A very quick question for you. What do you do when someone's at the door and you know they've got watches? Answer. Drop everything. Right in the middle of recording, guys. Sorry, that last clip ended rather abruptly. I knew it was the posty. I was expecting a couple of watches, so my apologies for that. Anyway, we're back. I've stopped the chronograph. And I've reset the hands so we can see things more clearly. And as you can see, it's a very busy dial indeed. And that dial is just gorgeous. And of course, the crystal just accentuates it. It's a matte dial, believe it or not, but you wouldn't think it was that crystal, would you? No space left on this dial, the Boltony logo inside the 3 o'clock, that beautiful date position there. It's done very well, very legible and easy to see. And everything else is very bold, but if you look at the handset, the handset's all swords, even down to those subdials there. Every single one of them, if you look at the, the bottom subdial there, you see it hits all the indices, which it hits it, the 15. There we go. Right on the money, that's what you want to see. When it comes to operating the chronograph, I showed you basically earlier on, but these screw out, engage it, and you get a lovely positive mecha quartz click. I really like the positive feedback you get with that. Click it to stop it. Click it to reset it. It flies right back to the zero there. And of course, you make sure you screw these down uh, when it comes to going into the water or anything like that, because you don't want any water getting in there. But very good. Same with the crown, screw down crown as well. Operation of the VK67, very simple. Second position, first position. Change the date. If I can engage the first position, there you go. Back in again. Yeah, so very, very easy to operate. I'll move everything back in again so it looks the way it should when it's on your wrist. There we go. And that's the way it looks. Yeah, so it's a beautiful looking dial. That minute track around the edge is very bold and you can see every five minute marker there you've got that super luminova and that faux patinaed loom. You've also got BGW9 loom on this, but I won't spoil the part. I'll let you see everything in the cupboard of doom so you can see everything itself, how it works. Very nice indeed. I've explained all the sub dials earlier on too. Very simple but very busy face. It's absolutely gorgeous, bead blasted all round, nice and simple, nice quality leather strap, matching hardware on, the buckle and tang there, two keepers, one moves, but the hands are beautifully polished, as you can see there, and you got a lovely counterbalance on that chronograph hand, red tip, and then you've got that lovely little circle on the end of it, but the hands are delightful, really beautiful sword hands, sword hands all the way around. And then, of course, the Arabics are 5, 10, 20, 25. Just going into the Flieger style there, rather than your conventional 1, 2, 3, etc. Very nicely done. As you would expect it, top-notch finishing from Boltony. I've got no issues with it at all. Screw-down case back as well. Sterile, but you wouldn't expect anything else at this price point. Really, really nice. Crown is unsigned, of course, but it is very, very grippy and well-knurled. Really, really nice. Now, we were talking about loom earlier on. Let's have a look at the Cupboard of Doom. Hi there and welcome back to the Cupboard of Doom. And as you can see here, the loom on this new chronograph from Boltony is excellent. We've got two distinct colours here. We've got the faux patina loom on the five minute markers on the outer track there, at every five minute marker. 
and it's also on the hour and the minute hand whereas everything else is blue BGW9 including the blue arrow at the top of the dial there you can hardly see it because the crone's actually in the way so I'm in the dark here and I'm not moving around in this cupboard um, but yeah you can see everything else is really well done and you can see those little blue BGW9 hands at the bottom there as well really really cool this thing lights up like a torch and it does last all night really good performance from the ball tonight and they never seem to disappoint in the loom department all right back to the studio so there you go yet another ball tonight enters the cupboard of doom and comes out with a big big pass and a smile on his face I tell you what, Boltony know how to do loom, they know how to do crystals, and they really know how to make really good watches, but at the same time, are they maybe starting to show that they're losing a little bit of direction here? Well, I thought that until I saw this watch in person. Think about it, they offer so many different chronographs in their ranges now. They've just added an extra military Flieger style chronograph to their range, so it's not detracting from their biggest seller. If anything, it's just adding another string to their bow. So, the other watch is still going to sell as it did. I wouldn't buy it, but there's no quality issues on this watch at all. As far as the watch, the face, the build quality and everything is concerned, I think this is a superb little watch. Is it my style? No, it's not my style, but at the same time, there's no flaws and there's no issues with it. It's a bit busy for me, but people like busy. It's like people like the old analogue style of cars like I used to like, you know, your Super Mirafiores or... These, you know, racing cars that had all these dials that were like this. That's the kind of thing that people like. And if you gravitate towards that, this watch will be absolutely for you. These days, I'm a bit older. I like simpler. I like easy to read. Therefore, I preferred the last chronograph. But I also preferred their dress chronographs. This one, I don't prefer it, but it doesn't mean I don't like it. It just, it wouldn't be for me. It ticks all the boxes. I think it's a bit more niche than I'm used to. Bolton are maybe going to go down further down that niche route, I don't know. But we'll have to wait and see how they get on. But 10 out of 10 marks for this watch. Yes, it's busy, but I think there's a lot of fans out there who will like this watch. So I'm going to leave it there just now, guys. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to buy this watch. This is John from John's Watch Joint. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll catch you again in the next one. Ta-ra for now.